One of the things that I wish there was more of on YouTube is examples of other people's systems when it comes to GTD or getting things done by David Allen. So I thought, well, instead of complaining about it, I'll show you mine. And so here it is. So basically, it, when I want to put things in, you know, of course, we've got an inbox. Uh, so let's put something in there. So let's just call this test task one. Okay. And project idea one. So I can go back in and, and take care of those later. Now tasks is in there. I got a project, so I should, according to getting things done, I should write a one sentence summary of the project. So this project will be done when, that's the way I like to do it, Dean A approves a class. That's totally made up, but you get the point. So most of my dis, uh, descriptions are like this because uh, I want to know what done looks like. According to David Allen, those descriptions ought to be descriptive so that you know exactly what needs to be done. And so you may be much more descriptive in your one sentence summary than that, but you get the idea. So I've got that there. And when I empty my inbox, I'll go through each one of these and put them in the right place. So projects, all of my projects, except for church projects, go into this folder here. So I just drag and drop. Okay. This particular task is, I'm going to say, a one-off task. But before I move it, I want to put a context on it. Okay. And let's, let's say that... Um, I know that it's got to go to my Dean and I also know where I want to do this particular thing. I want to do it in my office. Okay. So I've got two tags here called labels. Okay. So I'll click that off and then it'll go on a one off or standalone task and it goes there. Uh, the other thing that I just re remembered is that I need to include a tag on this project idea because it's a project that I'm going to have to talk to my dean about. So I need to go back and put, I'm going to move my picture out of the way and tag my dean on that. All right, so now I've got those two things done and they have been processed through my, my inbox. They are no longer here. Um, I could move a few other things over. Um, so that that is actually done. I've done that. And that got put in the wrong spot. So let me move that out of here. Well, I'll deal with that later. And I dealt with that too. So I don't need to worry about that. I hit my daily goal, yay. And I want to put that in the standalone task as well. Okay. So I've got that in here. Oh, but that was a project. So I'm going to move that into projects. So, okay. Now, so it's in there. Um, and as I look through all of my projects, I know that all of my projects have at least one next action when this little fraction at the bottom here uh, indicates that uh, it's the whole no whole number isn't zero. So this first number should always be smaller than the um, the second number, uh, the denominator in that fraction. Okay, and as long as that's the case, then I always know that I've got a next action that needs to occur. If I don't have, if I'm in a situation where um, I haven't identified a next action. Let's just go in here. It says get rid of filing cabinet. Okay. Let's um, let's click on that. And so I'm now looking at this, and it shows I've got a one, 
for one, that means that I don't have a next action, and so I, I need to add something to this particular action. Um, I'm going to unclick that and add another action. Uh, uh. Okay, so I've added some context to that next action, and so then I can go back. I look, um, I can see that I've that number's changed to two next actions, so I know that I at least have uh, two things left to do. Now, uh, so that's how I manage my projects, and so I usually do that during my weekly review. Um, occasionally, uh, if I just have a few moments, I'll look through this list to see if I can update anything so I can keep my weekly review as short as possible. Then, when I have a meeting with my dean, I can go into um, filters and labels, and I've got my labels listed here, and I can simply click on his name, and you can see the list of things that I need to talk about with my dean. And so I've got a built-in agenda for any meeting or any time that I have an opportunity to follow up about different things um, with my dean. Uh, how about somebody else? Maybe I, I need to go talk to the secretary. So I go tick on this and I've got a list of things that I can discuss with another person. And so as long as I tag or label uh, everything that I might want to talk about with different people, I've got a built-in agenda ready to go. How about my wife? Do I have stuff to talk about with my wife? Here, where is she? She's on here somewhere. There she is. Uh, not at the moment. I don't have anything to talk about my, with my wife. I probably do. I just haven't put it on there. Um, but it's one of those things that's a constant, uh, you're constantly working on, isn't it? And so that's my, that's my, how I deal with tasks and projects. I do keep a couple of other things like routines down here. I keep routines separate, and that's simply because when I uh, separate things out by labels, um, I don't necessarily want to see uh, what I'm doing next week. So if I click this off, it's going to jump to the next time. These are just regular routines, and I don't want my routines in my projects or in my standalone tasks. Um, I find that it clutters up. Um, clutters things up and so I just find that it's, it's best. Now I do sometimes tag a few so I've you know, obviously I've tagged these where I'm going to do that so that if I t um, look at most of this stuff is stuff I'm going to do at my house anyway so I probably don't even need to tag it. But generally my idea is that I don't need to see my routines unless I'm actually doing them so I separated them out. This is savers, so this is my morning my morning routine. Um, if you know Hal Elrod, the author who came up with the idea of Miracle Mornings, that's what this is, and I just have a place where I can do it. Looks like I need to do better on reading and uh, uh, scripting. I haven't done that yet today, so I still need to do those before I go to bed tonight. I also have a tickler file. Um, and these are things that I have specific dates when I want to do them. The dates are usually on uh, just reminders. So unless they have a specific due date, I have a reminder set. And it allows me to, so I'll click on this. So there's a 2023 assessment conference that I want to go to. And I've just set a reminder uh, for me to look at this about the time I'll need to register for the conference. And so that's how my tickler file file works. Now, if I have a shared folder, um, and I periodically have shared folders with people, then what I do is I'll share the folder. This one's shared with my daughter uh, with her math homework. She's got um, a Todoist as well, but at the moment we don't have anything listed there. So that has to be a separate folder, and that's just way Todoist does it. You have to sh uh, share projects. And so this is not ideal for that situation because I don't want to share all my projects with other people. 
Um, so if I have a, a, a special project that requires me to share something with them, I have to uh, separate it out into a different folder over here. Again, and then another reason why I don't really like the fact that they named this projects. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Um, anyway, so I hope you have a good day. I hope this was educational. Uh, I could go through other things, but I, uh, for now, we'll leave it at that. Have a wonderful day.